Business Brain, episode 564, for casual Friday, July 5th, National Workaholics Day, 2024. Folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take an idea or three, we crunch them, we dissect them, we analyze them, we use them to tune our business brains, yours, mine, his, hers, everybody's business brain, together every single episode. Our sponsor this week is fastmail.com slash business brain. That's where you can go to get 30 days uh, for free and then 10% off because you used our link of your first year. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. It's the email service I use for now here in Durham, New Hampshire. I am Dave Hamilton. And out here in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Happy Friday, man. Hope you had a good fourth by the, when this uh, plays out. By the time this comes out. I hope you did, too. Yeah. yeah. I hope yeah. you all did. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. National Workaholic Day. Now, I, you know. Yeah. Uh, that that's an interesting uh, we should do a show where we dissect the difference between you know a workaholic and us you know or an entrepreneur <laughs> you know what i mean because i'm not sure there's a difference Shannon. no but workaholic <laughs> kind of has that negative yes you know uh negative connotation but i think if you do it right you can be a workaholic in a positive way if if you know we on Wednesday we did just this lifestyle business yeah. episode that has a lot to do with it that you're yeah you're creating things that make your life better you're trying to live this charmed life which Dave reminds us of all the time and so you know I I don't know that we we might have to reframe that that uh, that all right that I'm word. into that yeah me too you know what else needs to be reframed Shannon <laughs> tell me Dave LinkedIn so I have uh. It, 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 this other business that we've talked about, but I, but nobody knows what it is, and that's great because I can talk freely about it. And uh, a lot of the business has uh, an Android app. Okay. It runs through an Android app. We do not yet have an iOS app. Mm. And there's various reasons for that, but but none of them are such that we shouldn't have an iOS app. It's just that we don't have an iOS app, right? Gotcha. And so- Got you. Sort of the next thing that we're going to do with this business is to, whether it sells or not, is uh, build an iOS app. And uh, so okay. awesome. I, if you heard the episodes last week, I was a little frustrated with the way the lawyers are going to kill this deal and it's fine. It's just how it's going to be. Uh, and so I was like, all right, well, this is stupid. I, I'm, I'm tired of sitting on my hands. Yeah. I want to find somebody that can help us. Yeah, because you still it. want to build the iOS app no matter what happens. No matter Correct. what. Correct. Yeah. And it's it's built in Flutter and a whole thing, and, and, and the, the Android app is built in Flutter, uh, which is a cross-platform development environment, mm -hmm. and so should, in theory, be easy to you know take this and, and move it to iOS. But we want okay. someone that's familiar with that side of things to sort of handle it for us, because we know there's... I mean, I've worked with technology long sure. enough. It's it's never just press the button and go. It's, it's yeah, not yeah. how it's not going to work. Right. Yes. And so I posted on my various socials, who do I know, like who of my friends, and there certainly are plenty, uh, build iOS apps and understand Flutter. Now, I've narrowed it down a little bit. And so okay. I posted this on X. I posted it on Facebook. I'm pretty sure I found the person. They are a longtime nice. friend. Awesome. Uh, I found him through Facebook, and I posted it on LinkedIn. Uh-oh. Shannon, this is exactly the... Now, I want to separate what I'm talking about here from LinkedIn Jobs. I've used LinkedIn oh, Jobs yeah. to find people, and that's awesome. Okay. This is LinkedIn, the social media platform, right? So I Got did it. not post this as a job because it wasn't a job just, posting. Yeah, it's a, just say, hey, we're looking for somebody to who is take, Who of my yeah. friends does yeah. this? I might even just want to pay you for a, an hour of your time to, to tell us. Yourself. Yeah. To educate us. Exactly. Exactly. So- this is, I'm looking for a friend that knows oh, these things. I bet you things. had some, a lot of new friends. Dude, within, <laughs> I, I deleted the post after 90 minutes and it was 89 minutes too late. Uh, I had my phone ringing. People what? texting me. Oh my god! Correct. Gosh. I have no nasty. idea. I mean, I know my phone number is yeah. not hard to find on the internet. Like it, yeah. all these things. But still, 90 minutes and it like my world cratered and melted down and I'm still getting emails and phone calls from people just from that 90 minute period. 
this is what it's LinkedIn nuts, is for. I thought LinkedIn would be the best place for me to post this. And it turns out it was the worst. Now, again, I've posted jobs there, like yeah. actual job listings. Right. And right. that works out spectacularly. But they have a major freaking problem if they're going to allow their platform to be used like this, because I will never do that there again. I mean, I'll, I'll post jobs there, but I'll never post anything like that there again. Yeah. That, it was worthless yeah. to me. I, yeah. I don't want people I don't no. know. Well, like, I made that's it really clear. Can you, you know? can you fine tune those posts to only go to the people that like perhaps connected? maybe that's maybe that's a because I know yeah 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 maybe to maybe fine tune it but yeah you you have to, the thing about that having a big audience is it's great but it can also be a nightmare yes yeah but and, but like you know on 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 Facebook I got a couple of comments on the post nice. that was like no that a few that were like mm, yeah like I then I just deleted it was fine I just deleted the comment and it was done yeah. but I didn't my DMs didn't blow up my phone didn't start ringing like that was the LinkedIn thing and it's like to me that's the platform where that should work I would agree it seems like it should yeah so LinkedIn's got a problem tragedy yeah, but it's like, I don't know how they can fix it. I don't know if they're interested in fixing it. They may but, have, yeah, maybe they say, well, you should have posted this in LinkedIn Jobs because it's a job, but you're actually hey, just trying to communicate with the people that follow you. Or, right, or but I don't, I don't want to post it yes. as a job, at least yeah. not yet. Like, I, I wanted to just talk to my friends on yeah. LinkedIn, and that did not work. It failed yes. <laughs> spectacularly. Miserably. Yes. This five minutes just that we've just had right now is the most value I've gotten out of that LinkedIn post. And it does not offset the distraction that yeah. I also earned from it. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. That's right. Good. All right, folks. Have you ever felt like your inbox is plotting against you? Fear not, for I have the ultimate solution, our sponsor, Fastmail. Imagine an email service so smooth it's like having a personal assistant made of clouds and unicorns. Yep, that's Fastmail. I've been using Fastmail for over five years now, both for my work and personal emails. And let me tell you, it's a game changer. Fastmail is an independent, employee-owned email provider that's been rocking the email world for over 20 years. No ads, no creepy data sharing, just pure, unadulterated email bliss. For as little as five bucks a month, you get a private inbox that's cleaner than your grandma's kitchen. Got a partner? Great. Fastmail's duo plan is perfect for you two lovebirds. Need to manage the whole family's emails? The family plan handles up to six people. And the business plan offers powerful admin controls for your empire. Fastmail lets you customize your workflow with colors, custom swipes, night mode, and more. They've got productivity features like scheduled send, snooze, and a search bar so powerful it might as well have a PhD. Switching to Fastmail is a breeze. Just download your data and import it and you're good to go. For my Gmail, it actually slurped it right in across uh, from the Gmail directly. Plus, their human support team is available 24-7 to help you out of any pickle. So, if you want to tame your inbox and live a charmed email life, you're going to want to make email better for you with Fastmail. Try Fastmail free for 30 days and get 10% off your first year at fastmail.com slash businessbrain. Again, that's fastmail.com slash businessbrain. And our thanks to Fastmail for sponsoring this week's episode. All right. So you mentioned last week that we were going to talk about building confidence. Shane. Yeah, I uh, I was driving home from our river place uh, a couple yep. weeks ago, and I was thinking about some of the work, peak clients that I'm working with, and the, and the underlying stuff that you know you're helping with problem solving. It it it's it's almost like you're trying to condensed nine and a half years of this podcast into an hour call <laughs> once sure. a week, right? And talk about all the things we've talked about. But what I've noticed over time with some of these folks that get it or picking it up is that they're getting more confident. I can just feel it. I sense it. They're confident yeah. talking about things, whether you're focused on solving a problem with your employees or whether they're talking about where is the growth, the biz dev at. They just, even the words that they use. And I, and I, 
in my head, you know, I'm always looking for these little t-shirt quotes. You know, I love to talk about, you know, mistakes or yeah. tuition and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, I sell confidence. That's what I'm doing right uh, now. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and it got me thinking back to where when I was younger, um, and like I used to run, own a landscape construction company and I had to go okay. to nurseries and do all this kind of stuff. But I, I was young. I looked like I was probably like 14 years old and I was kind of walking around, not, I didn't really know what was going on. But one thing I noticed was that everybody dressed alike. Everybody okay. wore work boots and maybe a Carhartt jacket and everybody had like this clipboard in their hand with all their stuff, their work. Right. Yeah. So, and because what I wanted is I, I wanted to get the, the, the contractor prices, but I wasn't the contractor. I mean, I just, I, I was not. So I wanted the, the deal, but I was young and I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't, I could, I didn't, couldn't even think about getting my contractor's license. We did this stuff sure, in sure. the summer when I was in college. Yeah. 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 So I went out and I bought, a, I, get, I got a pair of boots. I got a good a jacket, very similar, and I bought this aluminum binder. I'll never forget. I still have it. One of these binders that that opens up and you can put papers inside and all this kind of thing, and it's okay. aluminum. And I walked in, and everybody treated me different, and I felt more confident, and I felt like I was part of the tribe or the group or whatever. And that being confident allowed me to get that discounted pricing. They didn't even ask me. They yeah. just, I just talked to and said, oh, you know what? I'm looking for these trees. I need this. I need that. And I, I, what I want to have a discussion about is how you build that confidence and how you get to be, you can't be arrogant. That's not what no, I'm talking no. about. But no. you want to be confident in when you're talking to other people about your business, when you're talking to your employees, and maybe sometimes inside you're, you're, you don't know, probably maybe often. But how do you carry yourself where you have that confidence that people want to be around, want to follow? Yeah, it, it, it's interesting as you were sort of setting this up here, you mentioned that people started using different language. Yep. Uh, and I think that's both a cause and an effect. Learning the right language to use mm -hmm. helps remove, I, I think... We're, we're building confidence. It is two sides of the same coin. Of course, two ways to say the same thing. Building confidence means removing that imposter syndrome, right? Or yes, at least right. making right. you comfortable with imposter syndrome, right? Yeah. right. One version or the other. The understanding other. it, right? Yeah. yeah. Understanding it. And yeah, and really sort of managing imposter yes. syndrome. And part of it is, okay, well, I know that if I walk in there and say the right words, or I know if I dress the right way, or I know that if I uh, have my aluminum binder, that, you know, I'm going to, I know I'm going to be treated differently. And then not only are you carrying the aluminum binder, but you're carrying yourself differently. Yes. You're, you're, and, and those kinds of you know, they're mind hacks. If, yeah. if for you're lack of anything you're, you're else. more confident you, and the words but, you're using, all that stuff. Right? But that's the thing is it's like you're educating yourself about this. It, you're educating yourself about appearance, which is important, but also about language, which is yeah. equally important. If I go hang out with musicians and, you know, use slang for the way we talk about, like, depending on the types of musicians... I if I go hang out with a rock band and I start talking about well, you know when the when 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 uh, there's that tritone that happens there uh, uh, in the third measure the the third sixteenth note of the third measure like that that's a really interesting thing and and it it's almost a device that you might think the composer used if I did that on a theater gig everybody would be like salivating for my next word uh, if I did yeah. that in a rock and roll setting people would be like nerd. You know, yeah. Like, so, yeah, well, no, it'd be fine. That's but right. It's it's different, like different language in different scenarios. Yeah. And that's OK. But learning what language is appropriate in which in each scenario is the thing that will instill confidence. It's one yeah. of the things. One of the, the things. Thing, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's like a whole foundation you want to build. And yeah, uh, sometimes you, you want I, it, for me, you want to be confident enough to say a couple things. I don't know. Yes. And I don't know what that is. Tell me what that is. And yep. that for me took me a long time 
because I Same. always used to think that, well, I have to have the answer that makes me more confident. But in reality, you know, you're no one expects you to know everything, but it's the way you handle it. And you could certainly say, oh, I don't know what that is, but let me do some research and I can come yes. back to you. Yes. Uh, and you, you, I think the best way to start is with small little things that make you more confident. It's, yeah. it's little successes that you have that you can build on during the day and not getting way ahead of yourself. Because sometimes I think when you get way ahead, to, that's when you kind of sound arrogant. Like when I was younger and I had lots of older people working for me, like uh, most yeah. of them, yes. I really had to change my demeanor because I wanted to be confident, but I didn't want them to think that I was cocky and yeah. that I was, I wanted to be clear that, hey, that you're going to do what I want you to do, but I yep. want to say it in a respectful and empathetic way, because if they respect you, it's much better than if they oh, fear you're way you. better off. You're yes. way better off. So, yes. so building that, and to, back to your point on language, the words that you use, yeah. and like if you come to some, you know, a, a, one of your employees that's 20 years older than you, and you start throwing out slang that and talking a certain way or using acronyms that they're not, they're like, what, you know, and, and yeah, saying what? certain things, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they're, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. But if, you know, you engage and a lot, maybe some of it is, or a lot of it is this pacing and leading concept where you pace the way they're talking also at the rate of speech, right? I get oh. pretty excited and I start talking quick and just we'll get this done. Okay. You understand? Great. And I walk away. Well, yeah. maybe if you have someone that's either not familiar or different demographic or age group, you have to kind of pace along to them. And but the the, the small successes it makes me more confident. You know, when you and and understanding when you're first starting out. Yeah. Okay, I'm the underdog here. I'm going to have to. These people are mentoring to me. And so I'm going to respond to them in a certain manner. Yep. Uh, not, I don't want to say, well, I, I'm going to say deferential, but you are yeah. deferring to their expertise. You, it, right? There's nothing wrong with being deferential. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and even like, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it if, if you're building something and you're working with partners yeah, and they are, you brought them in because they have some level of expertise let them be there and and defer to them and learn it and then and after, truly like sincerely learn it yeah, yeah. learn it yeah. so that you know down the road you can use those same acronyms i mean i often look up like a, i don't know what is you know what is uh eos or erp and what does this yeah. stand for and oh yeah i still I do, do it to this day time. Yeah, yeah of course still, like, oh, you can't okay. know that's maybe maybe this is the key or one of the keys you can't know everything and everyone knows that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's right. So, that's right. So don't, if you act like you could know everything, that's when people that's will stop believing you. Yes. If you, Oh yeah, that, I know that. I know that really. How is that? Like yeah. you're either a like freak of nature. Well, you get that, that know it all. Sense. This guy's a know yeah. All but like that yeah. guy's a know it all. Like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I think also a part of being confident is, uh, at, confident asking questions and phrasing things like a question because you can still get the same thing, but you get greater engagement from whoever you're trying to, you know, either yeah. influence or persuade or get to do something or or partner with or whatever it is. Asking those questions uh, in a manner, even if you know down the road what you want out of it, but phrasing it as a question, it gives you some wiggle room. If, it if, totally does. If you do it right. And, you know, like you're 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 communicating that you have an, a, an you have ignorance on this. Yeah, you have course. a knowledge gap. And that's but as soon as you do knowledge that, gap. it frees yeah. you and it allows them you. to come in and comment in a way where they feel valuable. Yes. And I I, I think that that building up that confidence or that part of that is building your confidence. So you could walk into any room, any trade show, any conference, 
and you know pick a topic and I can talk about it even and you know related to something you obviously you have some experience with but sure confidence like we, we talked about it when the a few shows back when you were up there doing a talk and you realized that somebody in the audience yeah. knew more yeah. about it than you did yeah. but you you handled it in such a way that you're confident to, okay great this let's engage let's do this not being threatened right very important part and and just carrying yourself with a, a certain gravitas or hey i've achieved these things and those achievements that you're you're stacking up to build confidence they can be tiny tiny yes. nobody else knows about it but in your head you know it's yes. like man i got up this morning when i wanted to i exercised when i wanted to i jumped i did the you know one great hack is the stuff that's really hanging over your head is to knock it out first thing. Oh, get it out of the way first. Get it out of the ah, way. I love that. You yes. feel good about it. You, the stuff you were struggling with, the phone call you didn't want to make, you got that done by 9 a.m. Oh, th that should make you feel good about yourself. And your confidence level should be high uh, to where you know you're like, I'm effective. I'm, I'm impactful. And yeah. the last thing I want to say about it is I think it builds your confidence when you help people when you are thinking about as part of your framework is how do I make things better for somebody else? Whether it's somebody you hired, whether it's somebody listening to the show, something you posted online, how do you improve their life? It's that law of reciprocity. It's going to come back. Like when people thank me for sharing some content, something that I know, it seems like just I could figure it out because I've done it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, man, and I respond, I'm like, that's the fuel. That's the energy that keeps me going. Knowing that I'm impacting your life in a positive way. That the makes feedback me that we confident. get from you for doing yeah. this show. Like I've been it's getting feedback from people for 20 years doing the podcast that I do. And that is the fuel yeah. that keeps me coming back. Sure. I make some money from it. Sure. I've grown some businesses from it. All that stuff's great. Yeah. But like. It, that doesn't happen first. No, the it's first action. thing that happens is the fuel. Yeah, the fuel. That's yeah, right. and taking action, little yes. bits, and and recognizing in your head because that's where most people live most of the time. It's like, okay, I've done this, I've done that. I, I yeah. these are great things that make I should feel better because I've achieved these things. And you be the judge. You you decide your own. You know, you define the success of your day, your week, your month. You know, whatever yeah. your year, that should be a song. Um, and uh, <laughs> sounds like it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, anyway, I just thought, you know, song you I, could sing it, for your friends. There you go. That's perfect. Uh, <laughs> I just thought it was worth recognizing that building confidence is part of building your business, building your charmed life, being yeah. confident in whatever you do. It's not related to how much money you make, it's not related to, I mean, that sometimes helps, but. It, there's all kinds of other ways to define it to make yourself more confident, which then starts this flywheel effect of helping you. It, it is. I love that flywheel effect. I, I have one one more little bite sized phrase to share, and that is, "You are the only one who lives in your head." Yeah, man. Uh, it, it's like you're the only, and that's a good thing. You you don't yeah. want to live in my head. I I don't want to live in yours. Like that's yeah. our heads are weird places. It's fine, but we're the only ones that get to see our thoughts, and unless yep. we share them, and so that's where all this starts and ends is in our heads. So Yeah. And sometimes yeah. you have to physically say, get out. Yes. To get out of your own head. Get out. To start yeah. getting stuff done. Get up, yeah. walk around, try to change things, get get it going. But yeah. yeah, I love your your, you know, thoughts on confidence, how you built up your own confidence. What's the what's the peak where you go over from confidence to cockiness? That's a ah. great. I, I, oh I, yeah, be aware of that. You know, yeah, yep. you got to be aware of that. But feedback yep. at businessbrain.show. Love to hear from you. Yeah, like he said, feedback at businessbrain.show. If that is our fuel, that that's the most important fuel. It's not the only piece of our fuel, but it's the most important one. Keep living that charmed life. We will see you next week.